Welcome to Junkyard Justin. Today, I have a 1991 Cadillac Sedan DeVille, or just Cadillac DeVille, if you're not fancy like that. But I want to tell you why I bought this car. And it's a really cheap car with a V8. You could literally get one of these cheaper than a Nissan 240 rolling shell. <laughs> It's it's ridiculous how much car you get for the money. Now this one I bought from a friend not too long ago. And it had some problems. You know, these things are quite bulletproof, but they got their issues. Had to replace a starter. Had to replace a wiring connector. Some interior parts. Uh, unfortunately, this one's got quite a bit of miles. 181,000 of them. But you really can't tell, at least on camera. So let's take a deeper dive into this thing and show you what it's got. I will say, we'll take a little tour all the way around. This is one of, probably one of the last contemporary designs that lasted for Cadillac. They didn't change this until about 1994, while all the others, including like the Eldorado and Seville, got their updates much earlier where they went to a very more, well, uh, rounded look. Not to say this one isn't rounded, but it's got some sharp edges. Lots of chrome on it, too. Which was something that uh, Cadillacs ended up missing all the way up until today. When you think of a Cadillac today, you don't think of luxury, per se. It's more of like a sports car brand, uh, Euro-inspired. And that's kind of what Cadillac did from the mid-90s and above. So they went for companies like BMW and, I guess, Audi. It's not too bad. Now, regardless if you like today's Cadillac or Cadillac of yesteryear, there's a pretty good consensus with Cadillac owners that you either love or absolutely hate these GM front wheel drive ones. And I'm no stranger to GM front wheel drives. I got a Forenza. I have a 66 Tornado. You know, love these cars. But one of my favorites has always been the Cadillacs. And there's just something about these interiors, the ride quality. It was almost up there with my Mercedes S Class. And that's a Pretty big bar to hit for one of these. So let's take a seat in here. I will say the interior on these is probably one of my favorites. So, so comfy. The cushioning on these seats is just, it's unmatched. I mean, I guess you could match it, but it'd be hard to do at the price range that you can buy these things at now. It really is a budget luxury car. This thing, it's pretty nice for how many miles are on this. Granted, this, this has 181,000. And there's not a ton of wear in this thing. And of course, you have these nice plush seats. Very, very nice. The leather still holds up really well for the age. And you even have... A little Cadillac crest. Now that is the like the one tear that's in this, unfortunately. But I think I can actually get that fixed. Speaking of, so you have the headliner for GMs, and of course, they like sagging down, and this car is no exception to that. You also see the nice opera lamps in the inside for the reading lights or whatnot. This car does come with a sunroof, as well. One of my favorite parts of this. I love a good sunroof or uh, what GM would call a, a moonroof, which was a bit bigger than a sunroof. Pretty neat. Now sitting in here, you got to admire this dashboard. Just how 80s it is for a 90s car. This dashboard is taking or taken straight from 
its uh, original design. They never really updated these until about 1994. So you still had the very big, square, padded dashboards. And along with one of my favorite features in this car, which is the digital cluster. And there it is, 181,000 miles. Ain't no slouch. <laughs> and of course, I think Don, John Davis would be uh, upset about this. No oil pressure gauge, no coolant gauge. There's nothing. There's no, nothing you could see. <laughs> All you get is your fuel economy, your gas gauge, which actually reads in gallons instead of showing you like an actual graph and how close you are to the, you know, end of your tank. And then, of course, your climate control. All nice and laid out. All electronic and whatnot now. Let's go ahead and turn it on. We'll rev it up too much, but we'll at least give you a little sound. Let's go ahead and take a look at what makes that sound underneath the hood. Now, when it comes to Cadillac, there are no slouches on their engines. This here is a 4.9 liter port fuel injected V8. Quite cool. So it gives it its nice sound, really smooth power from a pushrod V8, which was frankly outdated by this time. That's why in the next generation, they went with the North Star. And even in 93, I believe, 93 and a half sort of deal, you could get the North Star. Now, I don't want to get in a big argument about that of which engine's better. There is uh, haters and lovers of both engines. So hey, you do as you please. But for me, I love this engine. I've had three cars with it. Uh, I guess technically too. This one, uh, a 1993 Eldorado I had, which was an early production one without the North Star. And then I had my 88 Coupe de Ville, which had the 4.5 liter, which was a uh, de-stroked version of this, essentially. Don't get me wrong there. I have to do some research. If I'm wrong, I'll put some inform information on the screen. So you don't have to yell at me. <laughs> but anyways, so this engine produced around 200 horsepower uh, and just about 250 foot-pounds of torque or so. Uh, not that much per se, but it definitely lights up the tires as you saw in the beginning of the video. Granted, it was wet out, so I couldn't really get a lot of smoke going, but you know, had a christened new ride per se. <laughs> Love doing that. There's just something funny about a front-wheel drive burnout. You just, you don't expect it, especially from a car that looks like it took Grandma to church and uh, brought her potato salad to Thanksgiving dinner, you know. You just can't beat it. There's just something about the styling. If there's anything to take away from this, and I hope you do, you should buy one. Buy one before they start getting expensive again. Because guess what? Just like everything else, People put their rose-colored glasses on, and they start to see these cars from their childhood. They rode in the back seat with their grandparents or whatnot. Get one while they're still cheap. Trust me, you won't regret it, and it's the best riding experience you can have that isn't Mercedes-Benz money. <laughs>